Hey guys, what's up? This is a special edition of Talking Sass. My Cleveland Browns, well, not mine, but everybody's Cleveland Browns, the America's team now is what I'm calling them. They are on the road to the Super Bowl in the playoffs. Last week, we beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I thought, what? how awesome would it be to have a bunch of Browns fans like myself come on and talk about the Cleveland Browns being in the playoffs. So we have none other than give it up one time for J-Rock Daddy. We have former professional wrestler Lou Marconi. And we have international women's superstar, Holly Dead. Welcome, guys, to Talking Sass. Thank you. Glad to be here. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you guys for taking time out of your busy schedule to hang out with us here on Talking Sass and talk about the Cleveland Browns. So first thing I want to know is how did you guys all become Cleveland Browns fans? I mean, I know we all grew up in the Cleveland area, but what was your story with the Browns? Go ahead. Going first. I introduced you first. <laughs> all right. Uh, well, me, my whole life, my dad is the biggest Cleveland sports fan. I think all of us probably could say the same thing, though, our parents, you know, for sure. Um, that's how most of us do it, especially in the last 20 years, because you, you, your parents didn't tell you to be a Browns fan. You really didn't have reason to be a Browns fan. But we grew up when they were good. Like, I tell people that all the time. They're like, how can you be a Browns fan? I'm like, you don't understand. When I grew up, they were good. So yeah, this is this year. is this is different than what I'm used to. But like my kids, the Browns have never been good in their whole life. So unless I told them to lock, like be a Browns fan, they would have never done it. But no, my dad, like, oh, this shirt that I'm wearing here is like middle of the 80s or whatever. Um, just oh, that's why it's got the regular orange, not that new orange that they've got or whatever. But yeah, uh, my dad's always been a huge fan. So ever since I was a kid, I've been the biggest Browns fan. Indians, and the Indians were horrible in the 80s, and I didn't know it. Better. I loved them. I loved them. I, we could all say the same thing, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lou, you, how, how did you Well, I became Browns with my father, my dad. Uh, but my earliest memory was the 1980 cardiac kid season because I was six years old at that time. So I'm just, I don't care if I'm dating myself, but <laughs> it was that – I mean, I, that that was my earliest memories of that. And actually, at that point on, it was because of my father. I, mean, I was a Browns fan. That's what we, we, we watched it. It was a bonding thing. So one of the first things I did the next day after the Browns beat the Steelers last week was I called my dad. I said, did you watch it? And he goes, was, yeah. He stayed up and he watched it. And he was just, he was happy. So it was really good. So it was my father. Awesome. Holly, how about you? I, I want to go back real quick. Um, this is not America's team yet. I don't think they deserve it. This is, this is true Cleveland Browns fans. America doesn't deserve it. Not yet. They're not worthy yet. They're not that hard. So I don't want to throw that in. They don't get like the Browns that. yet. Yeah. Not yet. Not yet. They don't deserve it. Okay. But uh, not to date myself, uh, but my grandma, she would always watch the Browns every Sunday. Um, but I, I actually wasn't old enough to remember when they were good. Like uh, the 80s, I was still very adolescent. So like, I don't remember those times, them being in the playoffs. I do remember very vividly when they were leaving and I just have this image in my head of like just stuff being thrown onto the stadium, like piles of garbage because people were mad, like the team was leaving. And so yeah. a lot of my memories are them sucking for many, many years, but it was something that's ingrained in you. Like, this is our team. We bleed orange and brown. We suck no matter what, but like one day and finally this culture is changing and I'm, I'm loving it. Yeah. Now for me, when I was my earliest memory of being a Browns fan is when I was four years old, I was going in to have some kind of minor surgery. And my mom has always been or was always a Browns backer, which if you guys don't know what that is, that's a big corporation, not corporation, but group of fans that really support the Browns no matter what. And uh, she went to some charity event right before I had this surgery and she got me a Bernie, Car uh, Bernie Kozar candy bar. And he actually autographed the rapper. So I actually still have that rapper. So I, I'm dating myself there too as well. Because Bernie Kozar hasn't been the Browns quarterback for a good, good 20 plus years. <laughs> but I mean, die hard from the beginning. Like like Jerry said, or J-Rock said, like, you know, my mom, that was, that was how it was. I didn't know any different. You know, that was just in our yeah. house. It was the Browns. Yeah. Well, every, when, when Sundays, when the game was on TV, that's what was on. Mm -hmm. yep. You watched the Browns game. 
You, mm-hmm. you planned your day that Sunday around the Browns game. Yep. And that was it. I mean, that's just the way it was. It's orange and brown in this town. And that's why I said Cleveland will always be a Browns town. Even when the Cavs won it all, Cleveland will always be a Browns town. Well, even here in Montreal, like on Sundays, like I don't always get the game because of different uh, TV programming and stuff. They play different games. But when I did, it was on the TV. No one else was watching anything else. That's what was on. I might not be in Cleveland, but it was still that in this household. And I have the Cleveland Browns app. So even when the game wasn't on my TV, I have it on the app and I'm listening to the radio and I'm like, yes, yes, ah, the season is amazing. So speaking of the season being amazing, what were some of the highlights for you guys this year? Holly, we'll go with you first. Uh, um, I got to say that the Tennessee Titans game, because I think that was one where like, it was the start where all the analysts were like, uh, you know, like I, I took a screenshot of it. All of them had to pick like the Titans just counted us out and it was like, and we just kept up in our game. It was like, oh, the Browns aren't supposed to be here. They're supposed to be here. And every game it was just like, oh, we weren't supposed to win that game. We weren't supposed to be here. And I just love seeing our fuck, I don't know, excuse me. Sorry, I'm not this PG. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> our FN offensive line, like, like we've been able to build so much around that. Like it's giving Baker enough time, like to let him relax, do his thing. They open up for our freaking two-headed monster and, and Kareem and uh, Chump, Chubb. And I hated to see uh, OBJ go down, but like, it gave Baker a chance to spread out. And like, and some of these guys who I didn't know were good, like Hollywood Higgins. And it's like, we got tight ends that can catch and make plays too. It's like, we have, we have a full offense here. And like, we didn't even know it. And like, just to see all that develop, like usually it's our defense. That's what keeps us together. They're a little lacking on the, on this side, but it's like, we, we have an offense. Like we can put points on the board. Like this, this is amazing. Like what's happening here? Yeah. hundred percent. Lou, what about you? Believe it or not, I mean, I'm going to go all the way back to the, the second Cincinnati game. Do you remember that when there was like less than a minute to go? We had no time mm-hmm. out. Baker Mayfield got the ball. We drove right down the field and scored that touchdown with four sec- 11 seconds left. Mm-hmm. In like 50 seconds, he went down that field and boom, 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 boom. And I just, I was in awe. I was just like, wow. And that, that to me, I think, because I think it was shortly after the bye week, that was when it kind of started turning around for that offense. Just to me, that was that point when it just started clicking. So I would say that was the game because I was like, did that, like, did that just happen? Whoa. So I was like, we're going to do something here. So it kind of gave me that confidence that he, he's turning the corner. That's what did it for me. Awesome. J-Rock? See, to be honest, for me, it was a game that we lost. But it was the second Baltimore game because they got manhandled the first time. And Baltimore is like one of the few real teams that were on the schedule. You know, not, not no disrespect, but you had like, you know, the the East teams and had like you had a weaker schedule. So that, you know, even Cincinnati, I mean, you're supposed to be them, but the way they put 40 on the board against Baltimore, even yeah. though they lost the game, like that was when you said, okay, and you could really see things coming together, especially because they lost Beckham. And I'm one of those crazy people that thinks they played better after they lost Beckham than before, because I really do believe that Baker Mayfield subconsciously may have been trying too hard to, to get the ball to the best player on the field and it's hard to be like the best player on the field and be a decoy, but look at how much better the offense has played without him. And that, that sounds silly because it's so great, but it was that Baltimore game. And then obviously you see, they just kept rolling down the stretch. Baker Mayfield, what do you throw one interception in the last five games or whatnot? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what I find interesting is I'm in a lot of Browns groups on Facebook because I don't have that home feel here in Montreal for the Browns so like I keep that home feel from people that I'm connected with in those groups and there's still a lot of people who say Baker's not our guy what do you guys think about that he's not the quarterback that's gonna take us all the way man that's ridiculous I I gotta be honest like okay I'm not 100% a Baker Mayfield guy but I think it's unfair to even say that because you can't even count the beginning of his career because look at the different coaches, the different offensive coordinators, all the different players, all the transition. Like this is the first stable season that he had. And like, he really did get better down the stretch. And I'll tell you what, I'm not a hundred percent sold on him, but it wasn't the running game and it wasn't the defense. It was Baker Mayfield closed out the fourth quarter against Pittsburgh. Like when they were coming back and we could all feel, oh man, here comes, here comes Pittsburgh. They're coming back. It's going to be one of those games again. He, 
he converted a couple of passes. And then when he ran for that first down with a couple of minutes left, he just ducked his head and ran right into the linebacker and, and got like, I don't know, there was something there. Like he went out there and the Browns won that game. Never had a leader do that. So I don't know what kind of quarterback he's going to be, but he's a leader. And these guys believe him out there and they play for him, you know? I got to, I got to piggyback off of J rock. Uh, like I'm not a hundred percent on him, but again, like I can't fault him. Like the horrible guidance of Hugh Jackson. And then like Freddie oh. Kitchens who never should have been made head coach at all. Like he could, he could have stayed quarterback coach, but he was never ready to be the guy to lead the reins and stuff. It's like, and you can't put a quarterback, you can't keep changing him through different systems and expect him to progress. So it's like, like J rock said, we finally have like, what looks like our guy, a coach that can coach and lead him. And so we're finally starting to see what Baker is about. And like the, you guys mentioned the Cincinnati game, the Baltimore game. Like, I think I had to turn away from the Cincinnati game for a minute. I was like, oh my God, are we about to really lose to Cincinnati? <laughs> and, like, and then he turned and started driving it down. I'm like, oh shit. And like the Baltimore game, that was a, we lost that game, but it was like, oh crap, we're about to lose this game. And then Baker scored. It was like tip for tap. Baker scored a touchdown. Lamar scored one. Baker scored. Like we haven't had that quarterback, like, that fight that's in there and that's fighting like he is a leader he talks a little smack like if you're if you're winning talk whatever you want like i like the commercials you're mm-hmm. winning shoot all the commercials you want talk all you want like you're backing it up like we're finally this is only the first year in this system so like i, I want to see more progression i'm not 100 percent sold on him but this is the first year it's what january we're not talking about who are we drafting next at quarterback Who's oh. next? like like how long has it mm-hmm. been since, like we're January and we're talking about Browns playoffs in January. Normally we'd be like, all right, who are we drafting that quarterback? Who's going to be the next head coach? Right? We're usually we're, we're ready for another system. Like, mm-hmm. so yeah, this is our yeah. guy for right now. Let, let me just see him keep progressing. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, to, to, to piggyback on what both of you said, it, well, look at this. Let me make this point. In the 2018 draft, there was five quarterbacks taken in the first round. There's Mayfield, Darnold, Allen, uh, Rosen and then Lamar Jackson. Three out of those five are successful because look at it. Baltimore has a stable coaching system. So does Josh Allen have it in Buffalo. Now Baker Mayfield has it in Cleveland. So I think that had to do a lot with the environment, the, the shaky second sophomore, the sophomore slump, and everything else. I, I told somebody, I think it's ridiculous to not to say he's not our guy. That's just ridiculous. I think what you got to do is like give him, pick up the fifth year option, and just ride it out. Give him an, if, he, if he keeps playing like this next year, then sign with that long-term deal. Look, look at how long it took us to get a quarterback, yeah. to actually get a guy. I mean, this is – yeah, I mean, you're nodding. I could tell Tolly's nodding her head. Absolutely. So just look look at the dumpster fire we went through for the last 20 years. The jersey. <laughs> and, the and, infamous jersey with all the names on it. With you know? Tim Couch, Ty Detmer, all those guys. And Tim Couch actually wasn't that bad until he, he was the best right? of all of yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. But you he have wasn't that bad. With them. And that, you mm-hmm. know, somebody you have that chemistry with and the coaching system. And I feel like mm-hmm. with Baker now, he didn't obviously didn't have that with Kitchens. I mean, that was, he was doing the best. That was a mess. Good, but that was just a mismatch. And now with Stefanski in here, I think the possibilities are endless with Baker. I mean, He's getting more into a groove. He's getting in that pocket. He's getting the ball out. He's not, like you said, in the last five games, he's had, what, one interception? I mean, it's the, he's just constantly improving. And that's something that we weren't seeing in previous quarterbacks, in my opinion. I am for Baker. I think he's our guy. 100%. Me too. I'm if it's not on. this year, within the next two years, for sure we're getting to the Super Bowl with Baker Mayfield. That's my opinion. I've- I think I'll be partying for it. <laughs> Your lips to God's ears, for sure. Oh, please, yes. Every Browns fan, every Browns fan saying that. <laughs> and speaking of, who would you guys give MVP of the Browns season this year? I mean, we have so many great players, so many people making big plays. Who is your guy for MVP? Anybody? Yeah. I, me, personally, I'm going to pick Nick Chubb. I think what he's doing on the field is wonderful. The way he's running the ball, the way he's just barreling through other defenses. I love Nick Chubb. I'm down for him as my MVP. Mine, mine is Jarvis Landry. That's what I was. I like his attitude. Oh, I, oh go ahead. You can tell. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Yeah. Every time we need a big catch, Jarvis Landry makes it, man. 
Uh, True. His attitude, he, he brings that attitude, he brings that guts to, to, to it. And I loved it when he scored that touchdown against Pittsburgh last week, the way he walked and looked at them. Yeah, same old Browns, right? Same old Browns. <laughs> they, they sh- we shut him up. That was great. But he's not just flashy. He goes across the middle. He makes tough pass uh, catches for first downs. Like, he, he's gritty. He's not just flashy. Like, I'm not trying to crap on, but Beckham's more flashy. Like, he doesn't. Like he doesn't strike me yeah. as the kind of guy that's gonna do that dirty work, but Landry just leads by example. I love that guy. Yeah, Landry's yeah. amazing too. Holly, what about you? I'm gonna throw an audible. I'm gonna give Landry most underrated because I feel like he's right there with Beckham, but I feel like it was that one handed catch that got Beckham to start him and but like I yep. think they could do the yep. same thing or whatever. But like I say Land I say Landry's most underrated. Uh, I'm gonna pull an audible and I'm gonna just go with the entire offensive line. Like yes. honestly, like okay. Yes. Like yeah. I, I agree with without that. them, like, okay. like they have like compared to last year, like how many times Baker was getting sacked and like didn't have a chance to do anything. Like now he has time, like to throw the ball, like see what my options are, and they're creating spaces for our running backs to get through those holes. So like without them, like those plays aren't happening. Without him, Baker doesn't have that time to throw. Without him, those those running backs aren't getting through there. So I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw it out there, the whole offensive line. Like, oh, I love it. I'm with and that's. Going back to Baker Mayfield, a lot of the people' com- biggest complaint is that he's a one-read quarterback and he never gets to that second and third read. But up until now, what kind of time has he had to do that? Now they have the number one offensive line in football and two running backs who like the block and a fullback yep. who like the block. So the whole offense is just built to protect the quarterback a lot better. I love it. Yep. Yeah. Well, if you think about it, too, this offseason, they drafted Jedrick Wills. And then they signed Jack Conklin, two tackles, yeah. bookends. They addressed the offense. I'm hoping the next offseason is 2021, the spring, they're signing defensive players yep. <laughs> and drafting defensive players. That's what I'm hoping. Andrew Berry does the right thing. Smoked. Yeah. I it, think it he's getting a little torched. Defense is rounded out. Oh, man. The unstoppable Browns. Yeah. Would... Oh, man. It would take my breath away. <laughs> it always does. <laughs> It already does this year. So just rounding out the team to make it more complete would be like unbelievable in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, that's really, this isn't a finished product yet. I don't think. No, it's just the beginning. It's a young, hungry team. Yeah. Actually, I think Kansas City might show one of the things they need. I think they need that elite fast corner that can keep up with guys like uh, uh, Tyreek Hill, who's I think the biggest threat, you know, to the Browns, obviously. Mm -hmm. Denzel Ward's back, right? Yeah, yep. back off the COVID reserve list. Well, yeah, absolutely. But I mean, that's a tall task even for him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, let's he, talk. Like, let's let's talk Pittsburgh last week because there's so much shit talking going on. Even <laughs> I like I have never hated the Steelers. I never want them to beat the Browns, but I have never hated the Steelers. Why? Oh, why? Oh, oh why? I have always hated. <laughs> Why? What is wrong with you? I do have Why? A, Why? I do have a, while the Browns were gone, there was Mike Vrabel, who was now the head coach of the Tennessee Titans, was playing with uh, Pittsburgh at the time. And he was when he was at Ohio State, he was going to the nursing home that my mom worked at to visit his grandmother. So because of Mike Vrabel being on the Steelers when the Browns weren't in Cleveland, I started to enjoy a little bit of Pittsburgh, but because of him. So I've never hated them. I understand. I understand where you're coming from. I do understand. But after Juju Smith-Schuster talking shit, and I'll just read this quote just for anybody who's listening that didn't hear it. This is prior to the game. I think they're the same, still the same Browns team that I play every year. I think they're nameless gray faces. They have a couple of good players on their team. But at the end of the day, I don't know. The Browns is the Browns. Like, I just want to go punch this dude in the face. <laughs> so how do you guys feel with the Browns? Because, okay, after the Browns game, everybody was cool, calm, and collected, but they went over and they're like, yeah, the Browns is just the Browns. How about it? And they started showboating a little bit. It's football. It happens. But the Steelers have not, well, mostly Chase Claypool hasn't stopped talking shit. <laughs> about the Browns and how they dis how the Browns disrespected uh Juju Schuster there. Can I start? Yes, girl. Go. Yes, please, please. And this is our first time meeting. 
and I gotta say, I'm a little heartbroken that you don't hate right? the Steelers. Like, it's right? Like, you guys have ruined it. Could, could yeah, you hear like, my heart breaking over here in the silence? Like, I'm like, right, oh, like, I thought I knew you, girl. Right, you know? I didn't hate them. I didn't say that, like, they were my team. They were never my team. I just kind of... Hey, Shane team. Taylor's about to join us. Oh, what? Yeah. One hour late, all right. <laughs> Well, we'll let Holly continue, and when Shane joins, I'll bring him in. Okay, I have to get that out there. That yeah, no, I understand. That is, it's I, I, a little disturbing. Got to work on that. Like, it's a, it's been fuck Schittsburg, been rapist burger, all those guys. Like, fuck. Oh yeah, I definitely got a fan of that. But I, um, <laughs> but yeah, wow. uh, like people tried to, or Juju, even people tried to double down and say like, that's what the Steelers say. That's a Mike Tomlin thing. That they're nameless gray faces, whatever. But like. I mean, like, we're Browns fans. We know the history. We got to remember, like, a lot of these guys are young. A lot of them are not from Cleveland. Like, they know the Browns' history, but it's not their history. Like, these are young, hungry, good football players. And so they're like, this is a new culture. They're like, you're not going to disrespect us. So, like, for people to say, like, Chase Claypool saying, oh, we were classless. Like, I've seen plenty of pictures where Baker Mayfield went over to Juju and the other guys on their bench because they wouldn't get up because they were salty about the loss. So, like, so yeah, he ran. So a camera caught him saying Browns is the Browns. Like, yeah, and Browns is the Browns. So so what? And Chase Claypool has been going doubling back. He made a comment said we were classless, and then he said he wouldn't be so salty if we weren't classless. Then I saw another post just yesterday. He said, oh that that post was old. It happened right after the game. Nothing but respect to the Browns. Go rep the division. It's like, dude, just put your phone down. Like, you, <laughs> you know, like it's it's done. Like sit on your couch, enjoy the game. And then saying, like, oh, it doesn't matter because we're going to get clapped by the Chiefs. Like, so if we do lose to the Super Bowl champs, okay, that's what everybody's been expecting. And if we do lose, it's like the team that just beat you lost. So, like, none of what you're saying is like, just somebody take his phone. <laughs> right, yeah, it just makes him look stop. even worse. Yeah, right? Right. I'm good for now. Right. I'm good. I'm getting heated. Go, somebody. I'm getting heated. <laughs> well, uh, all right. All right. Let me do this. I'm, the, I'm probably the oldest one here. And um, I have a hate for the Pittsburgh Steelers that has been ingrained into me since I was a child. (laughs) And I had most of my wrestling career was made in Pittsburgh. That's the irony of the whole thing. And it's just, I mean, most of my wrestling was done in Pittsburgh. So I have a lot of friends in Pittsburgh and a lot of Steelers fans. Right after that game was over with, I got so many messages, DMs, congratulating me on the game. They said, just glow. Go ahead. They, they didn't even want to give me a satisfaction of getting to them first because they knew I was going to. All these years of us sucking and us being getting our asses kicked by them, we finally hit back. We hit back hard. We humiliated them on national television. We ran them from the playoffs. They got a quarterback that's geriatric with a re- rebuilt elbow that they're going to have to pay $41 million to in March if they keep them. They have over $20 million over the salary cap. They are a mess right now. We are the team that's on the rise. This feels so good. It's almost like a dream come true to me. I am enjoying every second of this. Thank you. Yeah, you know, like I said, I, I'm i not a fan of the Steelers. I've never cheered for them. I just, I don't have a hate for them. Like, ah, that's, that's disappointing. Ah, like, oh, go, it's girl. Still, oh. It's still disappointing to hear. Like, no, I, you need to have like, a hate for them. This is, this is going to sound sadistic, but like, I was a kid and my dad, gleefully told me the story of Turkey Jones breaking Terry Bradshaw's leg. And I remember as a kid, one of the happiest games I ever watched with my dad was the opening day, I think Bud Carson's first game as a coach, when they just clapped the Steelers. It was like 51 to nothing. It was I remember that 51 to nothing. That's another thing. Like I talked about how the Browns won when I was growing up. In the 80s, the Browns dominated Pittsburgh. Like the Steelers won like one game in the whole decade of the eighties against the Browns. So I grew up with the Browns just wiping the floor with them. It's definitely been different lately, you know, but uh, yeah. So I don't feel yeah. that at all. I don't understand you, Steph. Like, sorry, like okay. So when the Browns left, like I became like a green Bay Packers fan. Cause I'm like, Oh, well that's kind of like a hard working team like Cleveland. How do you become a Steelers fan when the Browns leave? Well, I was a uh-huh. Packers and two hey, Shane Taylor's hey. in the house. Is he? I became a. No. I just saw face. I became. Hey, Shane. 
Tassie Steph doesn't hate the Steelers, man. Okay, but he wasn't here for all of that. <laughs> Hi, Shane. By the way, everybody who, uh, if you're just noticing down here in our view, we have the baddest champion you'll ever see and the soon to be ROH World Heavyweight Champion because it was announced today oh, that he's in his match. Shane Taylor. Hey, one hour late, one hour late. Hey, listen, why are you coming from my head like that? You know what hey, I'm saying? I, I just want to this, come in man. smooth. You know what I mean? Come in smooth. The people at home don't know that I'm late. You know what I'm saying? As well, far as they, they know. know. Because we was listen, waiting on you. Listen, so as far as they know, I'm supposed to jump in right now. <laughs> superstar I'm jumping status, right now. I know, superstar. He showed up fashionably late. Like, you know what I mean? Yes. A whole production when Shane shows up. Listen, you know what I mean? These, these these are things that happen when you fight for world championships. You got TV oh. shows. You got. Oh, what did I tell you? You got me. What did I tell you? He was going to come on here. He was going to say, I had to put the kids to bed and I'm busy because I got this superstar life and y'all just whatever. Mm -hmm. And look, right, there right. he is. Listen, so no, le no, legit, right? So go to gym, eat, lay on the couch, because you know y'all know I don't sleep. And lay on, on, on the couch. I'm like, all right, half hour, max. I'm good. You know what I mean? Lay back, wake up. Oh, it's almost 10 o'clock. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Scrambling around like, oh, damn, y'all y'all still on? They're like, yes, hurry up. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, um, you have like 32 messages from us. Yeah, listen, right? listen <laughs> ev every one of them, my bad, my apologies. Now, <laughs> to shit. get this back on, on, on the staff about the Steelers, because this ain't about me. Um, right, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but here's us. what you said. I don't hate, I didn't hate the Steelers, okay? Uh, now, uh, what? I don't get it. Clarify, now that hatred's coming back because of Juju. Oh. Now it's back. Now it's back. Listen, I didn't hate on them. <laughs> but Shane, you knew my mom very well. Right. So when the Browns left, Mike Vrabel played for the Steelers. So I was enjoying a bit of the Steelers because of that reason, because of my mom. She knew Mike Vrabel. Anyway, I'm not a Steelers fan. I never was a Steelers fan. Fair, a Steelers fair fan. enough. Fair enough. Fan. But. Here, here's the thing about not hating the Steelers, right? That leaves this little window to be like, well, they're okay. And then that yeah. leads this little window to like, oh, like, I, I kind of like them and we can't have it. You know what I mean? No, so definitely. <laughs> Watch them and enjoy them for a time when Mike Vrabel played there afterwards. Don't say it anymore. Cool. Don't say it anymore. Let it go. All right. I, I feel it. Now, we're, we're going back. Speak of it. I mean, we're talking about the shit talking that was happening with the Pittsburgh Steelers even after the game this week, mostly with Chase, uh, Chase Claypool, who said it was a bad loss, but the Browns are going to get clapped next week, so it's all good. And Ooh. if the Browns won with more class, then I wouldn't have been so salty about it. But then mocking Juju, it didn't sit well with me. They can enjoy the win and another week of football, but then they'll be on the couch right next to me. Listen. They wouldn't be running their mouths like, like, like that if Juju had just shut the fuck up. Sorry to cuss. <laughs> but, like, yeah. where, You're where right. I'm from, where I'm from, where I'm from, right, where we're all from, run your mouth, you lose, this is what you have to look forward to. You can't sit back, run your mouth, and then be mad people celebrated a way that you didn't want them to. Mm -hmm. You can't do that. You gotta hold all these L's. Hundred percent. And like hold you said, Juju them. sucked at it. <laughs> I mean, they wouldn't be disrespecting Juju uh, Smith Schuster if it wasn't for him saying that we were nameless gray faces to begin. Right. This is this is what you brought on. This is what you started. Had you just sat back, not said anything, not put a chip on anybody's shoulder, right? You wouldn't be worried about it. Everybody would have just been like, "Hey, great, great win, good game." But I know, at least for me, right, what motivates me more than anything is people talking trash. Like, if, if you were to fight me on just a normal day, great day, you know what, you'll, you'll lose, but it'll be okay. You give me a chip, you give me a reason to really beat your ass, I'm going to make sure I beat your ass, let you know about it, call your mother up, let her know about it, call your sister up, let her know about it, like, you are going to have to pay 
for running your mouth. And that's what happened to the Steelers. And now you've got the Chiefs popping off too. I was like, listen, the last thing you want to do is get the Cleveland Browns enough energy. Give this city enough energy to, to squeak past the Chiefs, right? Once that happens, we, this whole city is going to be absolutely full of maniacs. It's going to be insane. And don't, don't let don't let there be a world in which the Steelers, or I mean, excuse me, at least the, the Browns get past the Chiefs and then are like waiting for the Ravens in the AFC championship game. Oh, get past the Ravens to go to the Super Bowl. Oh, oh it's, it's going to be ridiculous. You're it's going to be ridiculous. All of us right here. Yeah. Insane. Absolutely nuts. Well, well, if you think about it, Shane, the Chiefs, they, they really haven't been dominant at all this year. They've been kind of coasting. They really mm-hmm. haven't been playing that, that, that dominant of football. So one guy on the radio here in Cleveland was saying that it was, it's kind of like, you know, they're the young and hungry team who would be the one to knock them off would be the Browns. Mm-hmm. Makes sense. Well, I mean, go ahead, yeah. Go. Oh, sorry. My, my one thing from a strategic standpoint though, and had the Steelers taken advantage of this earlier, we probably wouldn't all even be having this conversation is our backup DBs are horrible, are absolutely horrible. If they had realized in the first quarter, neither of them could guard Juju or, or Claypool, <laughs> this, it, it would have been super tough, right? But right. you're talking about now going against Sammy Watkins, going against Tyreek Hill. And Sammy if you Watkins can't guard is out, Juju, I think. He's out. Sammy Watkins, Sammy Watkins is out. Is you're out. right, Ollie. Okay. Sammy Watkins is talking all that trash, and then he's out. That okay, listen, that's oh. that that's better news, but if Juju's gonna get a hundred plus yards on all those cat like what scares me is Tyreek Hill. Mm-hmm. There's it's, having him back there with a with a banged up secondary is a nightmare scenario. Yeah. Um so hopefully, you know what I mean, he he trips on something, you know what I mean, and uh <laughs> Can't 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 play at his full explosiveness for the whole four quarters, but man, hopefully we 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 get some guys back, get some coaches back, get some sense semblance of normalcy for, for that game. But we'll see. But he is he but he is he is a huge problem. I do believe he's back. back except for one person, isn't that correct? Yeah, yeah. Denzel Ward is back, and yeah. but uh, our, our secondary yeah. in general they do scare me. This game, like that, that's where we're gonna get torch that, like. Mm-hmm. And Miles Ma- like, yeah. Garrett's got to get a sack. I understand yeah. they were putting three, four guys on him in that game, which was hilarious to see. They're yeah. like, look, <laughs> they're like, look, we'll guard everybody else one on one. We'll take that chance. You ain't doing shit. Like, <laughs> tell you what, though, uh, honestly, he He's hasn't been the same COVID. since he since he got COVID. Like, yeah. he has been the same since he came back like you can tell he's huffing and puffing like they're taking him out in between plays like you see him on the sideline like trying to catch his breath like Mm -hmm. yeah he's not unfortunately he's not the same not the same player absolutely Mm -hmm. and that's that's for Browns they that was one of the things that let Pittsburgh get back in that game we could not get any pressure on the quarterback in the middle part of that game and you know like Ben had all day. That's a couple of those interceptions, like were just his own fault because we were not getting to him. And that's what you got to worry about. You got to get some pressure on Mahomes because otherwise he's just. And, and I mean, and not just, and, and Ben is a standstill guy. Right. You know what I mean, that's the scary part over. about it. You, mm-hmm. you can't, you can't put pressure on, on, on my homeboy and he gets a running. <laughs> my homeboy. You know what I mean? That's tough. Tough. Oh. Well, I mean, I was telling uh, J-Rock and Lou about this earlier. If you go back statistically and look, back in college, Baker Mayfield, when he played for Oklahoma and Mahomes played for um, Texas Tech, Baker beat him both times. And then when they came to Cleveland and they beat us, the Kansas City beat us, that was Freddie Kitchen's first game as, as a head coach. So we already had our backs up against the wall. So if I look at those statistics and I look at the numbers that have been put up on by both sides, both the uh, teams this year, we're pretty mm-hmm. evenly matched, I would say. So even though I think the Browns still in the eyes of everybody else, except for Browns fans are the underdogs, I don't right. see it as a match that's going to be that uneven. For this, I, I get you on that for sure. Um, the, the weird thing about those matchups in like college and stuff though, is that's, that's, 
so many different variables as to oh, why yeah. that played yeah. out the way it did. True enough, and you could have a mental thing to go, damn, this dude did beat me twice in college. I, 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 I still owe him one type stuff, but it's like there's so many variables to that. And I honestly think that being the underdog plays into our advantage, not even just as a team, but as a city. Like, that's who we are. You know what I mean? We, we, we have that underdog will show you mentality. So as long as we have that, we walk into it, I, I think, with extra confidence. Like, we're playing with house money. You know what I mean? Like, hey, we yeah. were supposed to be here last week. So – Let's see what happens. You know what I mean? Like, like you're walking in, you got nothing to lose. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's when we're the most like they should beat us, right? So the so the pressure is not on us. The pressure is on you. Y'all got to go out there and do it. Every mistake, then it's like, oh, uh oh, y'all slipping. Uh oh, you know what I mean? Like all that pressure is gonna be on them. So we'll see if they break. And you think about it, like it was the same thing for Pittsburgh. It's ratcheted up times 10. If you're the Steelers weren't supposed to lose to the Browns, if you're the defending champs, you're the right. Kansas city chiefs and right. you lose to the Browns. I mean, you know, like, and, and so if the Browns just get a lead instead of a shootout, I, I know everybody thinks it's just going to be back and forth, back and forth, but mm -hmm. the Browns get a lead and then run that clock down and, and ride that running game. Every second that the Browns have a lead, the pressure just true multiplies on Kansas city because they're going, Oh my God, we're losing to the Browns, you know? And so yeah. there's no, no pressure on the Browns at all this weekend. And that's, and that's when the chiefs tend to play their worst is when they're in games that they have to sit back and go punch for punch. And it's that slow heavyweight fight type fight. You know what I mean? That, that Rocky style fight. If you let them get into a shootout and I, I was, even saying last week, yo, I don't ever want a game in which we're up 28 to nothing on, on the Chiefs like we were uh, against the Steelers because that's when they seem to play their best. As soon as they give up a huge lead, just like in last year's playoffs, something clicks and then they become unstoppable. So it's like, all right, let's not do that. Let's not put them in a hole and get them going like, like that. Like, let's maybe make, you know, 7-7, 10-7. Seven, seven, you know, 13th, you know, like all the way down until we have a chance at the end to put it away. I think that's their best chance. Like, 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 like J-Rock was saying, that's their best chance to win this, keep that pressure and make them work for every bit of that game. Holly, you've been quiet for a while. What's up? You know, Shane Taylor, quiet. the man, is up in here yapping. Get you know, the, the, the fuck out of here. He shows up, he shows up late and just takes over. Over. Like, takes over. That's what I do, man. That's what I do. That's what he does, Lord. <laughs> main event, closing it out. Hey. Don't close it out. We're not main event yet. I'm, I'm in the mid card. Just let, let him come <laughs> on. time to hold to the main event, sir. Mid card time. Let me, let me shine here, okay? Um, How are you? I think it's going to come down to our defense, honestly. Like, offensively, like, we have what it takes to put points on the board. Like, I, I think it might be – unfortunately, I it will be a shootout, So, which will give all of us, us Browns fans that anxiety, like, oh, shit, oh, shit. <laughs> but, like, but, like, we have what it – like, with our running game, with all the weapons we have, like, with our tight ends and wide receivers, like, I don't, I don't see a problem putting points on the boards. But, like, our secondary and, like, our defense in general is just, like, I don't have faith in them, like – like those long passes, those long balls, that's where we get torched in. It's just like, fuck, you know, like it's like if the defense can get them down there, like in the red zone, they're, they're good, like holding them off there. But like those long balls, like our DBs get torched and it's just like, and it could be, a, it could be a long day. Like with Patrick Mahomes, like Denzel Ward, he's one guy, you know, but he can't do a lot. And again, like Miles Garrett, he, he's not breathing the same with that COVID. So I don't know if he's going to be able to get to Mahomes. Like I think a lot of it's going to be on our defense. It's, they got, they got to, they got work to do. I mean, to be honest, the front seven have to make sure that they contain things so that then you can have an extra safety back there following Hill or something. You're going to have to keep guys back. You can't, if those safeties have to keep coming up and, and sticking in for the linebackers, then then cornerbacks are going to be out there on an island and get torched. Mm. 100%. The other thing, too, the defense, our, it looks like our defense is designed to create turnovers. If we can do that, then we'll be in a position to win. If we don't, that makes it a lot tougher because the offense has to produce more. So mm -hmm. that I'm thinking create turnovers would be key. Definitely. Now let's, are we all in agreement 
at least that we think that this weekend Browns are winning. Everybody? No? I think so. I got the Browns 31-28. 31-28. Listen, I, I firmly believe that's the hope. <laughs> Spoken like a true hey, I put, I put, I put my money where my mouth is. I put my money where my mouth is. I went on Bovada and I got a nice money line and I put 20 bucks. I win 100 if the Browns win. So I put okay. my money where my mouth is on yeah. the Browns. I, I believe they can. I believe every all the guys in the locker room believe they have what it takes to beat them. Mm-hmm. Again, I, but I do think it's going to be a shootout. Like yeah. Patrick Mahomes is that dude for a reason. Like, I, you know, I can't take nothing from him. Like, half a we billion. Gotta, our, our defense has to stop them, like and right. It's not, it's not an easy test. So, like we, we, yeah. I think we, we are able to do it. Any given Sunday, though, like we, we again, right. we're not supposed to. We're not supposed to be here. We weren't supposed to beat Pittsburgh the first time to make the playoffs. We weren't supposed to be. We we're supposed to be a first round uh, eliminated. Mm-hmm. We're not supposed to be here. So any given Sunday, anything can happen. We'll yeah. see. Right. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, what's that? What do you think? I think they're gonna win. Me too. By how much and exactly right. how? I, I, I think they're gonna win. Awesome. I just think they're gonna win. So, I'll be confident. Yeah, I think they're going to win. Let's get. Some I, I, I have a very good feeling about this team. That's all I'm going to say. Let's get some expectations. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Let's say the Browns win this weekend, like Lou and uh, J Rock and I think, and the possibility with Holly and Shane. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, when this gets posted tomorrow, we'll probably already know who we're playing anyway. If we win, who would you rather see them? I mean, I'm pretty sure this is going to be unanimous. But do you want us to play the Buffalo Bills or the? The Ravens to defend the AFC championship. Come on, is there any question? I mean, it, I it, it was unanimous. It New gotta Cleveland. be the Ravens. It, New it Cleveland gotta be Buffalo. has to be it, Old Cleveland to get to the Super Bowl, man. Hey, the, <laughs> listen, the story, the story that that tells, it is, tells itself. I'm baby. getting, I'm getting goosebumps right now. You know oh, what I mean? That's WrestleMania have, main event booking listen, right there. To have Art Modell yeah. take it away from the city. Right? right, give it to somebody else. They go out there, they accomplish all the things that we couldn't accomplish. Then we come back, we're struggling for years, and to finally get to where we've always wanted to be, we got to go through the, the team that took it all from us. Oh, come on, Hollywood oh, can't write a story. You like can't that. write it, man. You can't. Can I write it? I'm it's only right. Pessimistic realist. I'm sorry. Hey, I'm gonna be the pessimistic realist for one second. The only reason I wouldn't want to face the Ravens is because if we lost, it would be that much fucking heartbreaking. Like, now we can lose this weekend and be like, we weren't supposed to be here, but like to make it to the fucking AFC Championships and have, I call them the Bravens with a B. I call them the right. Bravens. Fair. Right. To have, if the Old Bravens Browns. beat us, it's just like. Listen, you know, but that, like, that's like, that's too much heartache. Like, listen, again, that's and I, and I so feel you, but this Sunday, fine. But then like, right, right. Uh, but that, it's got to be Baltimore. But that's, that's part of the story be. though. That's, that's the, uh, has because to be. As, as big as the heartbreak would be, mm-hmm. that's how big, and if, if not more, the elation would be if you beat them. You see what I'm it saying? You've got to take that risk. It has to be Baltimore. <laughs> well, look. If you've got to take that risk and be on that limb, that, uh, uh, that's where it is. Man, I actually have a friend who works for the Baltimore Ravens. Of course you do. Of course you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? Like, uh, but I have no love for them ever, ever, ever. Okay. So, but he told me, like, we beat you both in, in regular season. We don't want to see you a third time because the chance of one team beating the yeah. same team three times, three times. Yeah. is right. very unlikely. So he's, he told me straight up, he's yeah. like, we do not want to see the Browns again. Period. Yeah. I think the and last time remember, it, happened, it was it was against the Browns. I think Pittsburgh did it when they knocked. Us yeah, out if you and also if you remember that Monday night game too, they had to play a perfect game to beat us. Oh yeah, and they barely beat us. Yeah. So I'm 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 I, I don't care who we play in the AFC. Think about I'm it. More, I'm more Lou, about the, Chiefs. the story tells itself, man. Like. Yes. The Browns got blown out early in the season, and then they go nip and tuck as they're starting their run towards the playoffs, and they just barely lose. And then it's the old Browns and the new Browns, and the Browns have to beat them to get to the game they've never been to before. I mean, come on. If, yeah, the story that, if the story goes that way, I, yeah, I'm for it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> You'd almost think the I NFL hear. knows what they're doing and they're booking this stuff. You'd almost think the <laughs> NFL knows. It's what all a work. It's all a work. Listen, if if the NFL didn't make such glaring, idiotic 
mistakes business wise, I would go Correct. with that. Correct. But <laughs> it's it, 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 it's like wrestling. It's like, bro, what are y'all doing? Uh, like, oh, you have no idea. You just got lucky. Don't get me started. Right, word. Don't get me started, please. Uh, All right. Listen. So let's say we beat the Kansas City this weekend. We beat the Baltimore Ravens. Who do we face in the Super Bowl? Are we facing the right. Packers, the Rams, the Packers, the Buccaneers? Aaron Rodgers, Aaron the Rodgers. Packers. Yeah, Packers. A-Rod. Everybody thinks the Packers going, huh? I said I, didn't I, say nothing yet. No, I, I, I said the Packers. I, uh, uh, with, with with everything going on with Green Bay and the situation with uh, Rodgers, I, I think he's one of those dudes that is just like, oh, all right. Let me be before I leave. Let me show you who the fuck I am. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like he's he's New got Orleans, that. Tip. New Orleans is good too, but one hundred percent, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. I I feel like, and and Drew Brees has had a hell of a year. Like, yep. not even just on the field, but all the shit he's had to get over off of it. He's had a hell of a year. Like, so he deserves to be there. But there's some there's something. A Rod, A Rod, man. Yeah, there's there's something that makes me uncomfortable about Rodgers, bro, and it's just like he's he, that he dude. He is, he that is 100% he is that, that dude. dude to be like, and oh, be word. Honest, seriously, y'all want to go with Jordan? Y'all want to go with Jordan Love? Watch this. <laughs> and, and I'll be honest, if the Browns go to their first Super Bowl, to me, there's no better team from the NFC than the Green Bay Packers because that's like right. a blue collar team. I mean, hell, the, the, the city of Green Bay owns the team, you know, like yeah. right. It's like a blue collar team. It's a team you can respect, you know, and it's Aaron Rodgers and Baker Mayfield. That would be good. And, and we were talking good. about stories, right? Now imagine right. this story, right? So you got the team who won the very first Super Bowl. Yep. Against the team who's never made it there. And what what better way to cap off that history than to do it against the team that won the very first one, who 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 are synonymous with the trophy. You see what I'm saying? Named after their coach. You know what I mean? Like, man, this whole run you, is just like. Are you if guys only. booking this? Are you guys booking this right now? <laughs> I'm just saying. saying, though. I'm just saying. With like, <laughs> if only. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I mean, I will. I will go as far as to say, whoever it is, Buffalo or Baltimore, if the Browns beat Kansas City, they're gonna win the AFC Championship. I 100 percent with you. The momentum yep. coming off of beating Kansas City, neither one of those teams is gonna want to touch the Browns after that. They're not gonna stand a chance. No. Yeah, this town's gonna go ape shit. One ape, ape shit. Ape shit. <laughs> this town will go ape shit. I'll be glad. I'm gonna hear yeah. Cleveland all the way up in Montreal. I'm nine hours away. Yes. But I guarantee yeah. I'll. Yeah. You will. Mm-hmm. Going on, guaranteed. Like, Absolutely. Well, it might mostly be from me losing my voice when I scream so much because they win, <laughs> but I'm still gonna hear it. <laughs> Bruh, I'm sitting here, so I'm I'm watching the pit game. Right, mm-hmm. and I'm I, and I'm going nuts, and my wife, wife's like, the babies are are asleep, and I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> and, and, and don't care. I will, the babies will go back to sleep later. Right, like what do you mean? Like, look, I put them back to sleep if they wake up. Like a, the game, no, come on now. No. My son was sleeping too, and I was silently like every time a, a turnover would happen or interception or touchdown or whatever was happening, I get up and I'm like going like this like going right. like trying to be as silent as possible but right. literally losing my shit inside my own body oh, i was nuts and she's like and i'm like look ah ah listen any <laughs> other any other time i'm as considerate as possible this time ah yeah. watch out got here got here Every, move i'm, I'm, I'm gonna do what i'm doing watch out <laughs> all right Shane, you weren't here earlier but we agreed that if we beat kansas city this week next friday we're doing this all over again for oh, oh you got to you got to you and got to sure it's on. it's on and for for luck shane has to show up 47 minutes late for sure like, <laughs> to the minute to the minute right, right, it can't yes, be 46 yeah. we have to do it exactly the same exactly right. the same yep he's on he's on central time give him a break look yeah. at him he's got his, oh, shane, no, listen, he's got his He's got his playoff beard growing over there. Look at him, man. Listen, and, and I and I trimmed it. You 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 should have saw, <laughs> bro. With no quarantine or like with like no no real shows to do except when we do these tapings, bro. I just let just let I it get go. my full my full homeless look going, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the the hair is ridiculous. The beard is is ridiculous. You know what I mean? 
I just trim it up and shave it Your all down. Time management is ridiculous. Gus. Oh, yeah. Everything. Oh. Everything. Gus. Time management. Gus, that everything. is so funny. Oh. While, while you're over there talking about your hair. So my youngest son, Joshua, saw a picture of you with your hair, your braids and stuff back in the day. Right. And right. he was wow. like, Dad, when did Shane have hair? And Jerry looks at him <laughs> and he's like, no, don't you know? Dad cut his hair off. And like, because Jerry remembers that, but Josh didn't right. know nothing about it. And and like told the story about us doing the whole thing or whatever. But nice. he used to have a big old head of hair back in the day. Listen, bro. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I used to until genetics said, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? But um, like Shane, I think we can make a few bucks. Let's do this. Like, I mean, right, listen, it. it was going anyway. You know what I'm saying? It, it was going anyway. But you know what I mean? I I run my destiny, not genetics. I, right? I say when it's time. You know what I'm saying? I own that shit. All right, let's bring it back in. Let's go ahead and close it up for this week. Everybody give your social media where they can find you. And then that way we know next week where we can reach out to everybody as well. So Lou, we'll start up there in the corner with you. Uh, you can find me on Facebook and you can find me on Twitter um, at L Marconi 251 on Twitter and just Lou Marconi on Facebook. All right, Holly Dead. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Holiday, H-O-L-I-D-E-A-D, Instagram, Holiday, and I. It's one word, Holiday, the word and, the word I. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Stay rock. Uh, I'm on my Facebook as my real name, but if you type in J-Rock, J-R-O-C-C, it'll find me somehow. You can tell the picture. It's me. Um, Twitter, Instagram, at J-Rock Daddy, J-R-O-C-C-D-A-D-Y. All right, Shane Taylor. Twitter and Instagram at Shane216Taylor, Facebook.com slash Notorious Shane Taylor. Uh, yeah, that's about it. All right, guys. This has been Talking Sass Special Edition Cleveland Browns podcast. We're going to be back next week. I promise you. Yes. Where we're going. Yes. yes. Kansas yes. Is going down. Go Browns. Go Browns. Go Browns. Go Browns. Go Browns.